All right, hey, welcome to my show, and today we're going to do basically an unboxing and testing of a VXT120. Um, this is dated, uh, obviously, you can see there, 52720. One of the things I like about this company is their date codes are honest and easy to read. <laughs> no um, hidden codes or anything there. So, as you can see, it is sealed. Uh, at the factory and so we're going to break the seal and find out what's inside and as we expect this is the adapters the 3 8 uh, male by half inch sweat uh, brass adapters for tying this thing in we set that aside open this up and we find the unit itself, uh, yep, labeled VXT120. There is the uh, DEMA uh, 443 valve with the flow restrictor, and this is the uh, strainer in there, and this is our feed button on the top. This is the tag that you uh, should hang by the feeder to record um, the numbers and all their uh, uh, details uh, for tracking water usage. This is the instructions. Very detailed. Uh, blue is the quick guide uh, to frequently asked questions. And the instructions are complete and fairly easy to understand. If you don't understand anything, they do want to hear from you. And uh, they will make the appropriate adjustments if uh, you find something confusing or in untrue or improper. So I'll set the box aside, set the card aside, and let's take a closer look. At the unit. So we get the quarter inch. Loosen them up. Annual maintenance required. The instructions aren't available. Let's see if we get this apart. Uh, there is. Um, Sort of a quick instructional guide here, if it would focus. There we are, and I think there's a QR code for the wiring. This is, uh, so far, looking like the 120 volt uh, unit because we have our power transformer. Uh, the 24 volt unit will have two uh, resistors there instead. Also, the Coil is labeled 120 volt. It is green. The switch pressed before. So I'm going to see if we can wire this thing up and do a quick, quick test. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this um, three pronged cord uh, with a switch. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up. Um, we want to go. Uh, black to H and N for uh, white. I'm going to go ahead here. Let's open up this screw. And open up this. Okay, it's neutral. Generally, you want to have that um, ground wire there uh, covered over because it tends to wander and <laughs> find a hot on its very own. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my power strip here. And we're going to turn it on. What we should see is the number two. And there it is. Which means that's kind of their symbol that this at least went through the basic testing of functionality in the, the factory where it's assembled in North Haven, Connecticut. So we're going to go ahead and press the feed button here, and we should hear a click, and there's a buzz. 
All right, I'm going to undo one of these terminals here. Got to be careful. This is potentially line voltage. I'll leave the being shocked to electro boom. All right, so we should hear a click, but no hum. So the click means the switch is working. It's closing this relay here. And uh, lack of a hum is indicative of the, the solenoid not being hooked up. And that's the solenoid being hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. And one of the things I like to do with 120 volt units is get an 832nd green screw um, self tapping. And it should go in this little hole here. So when this thing gets wired up, it's got a proper ground. Mm. You don't want to get a 1032nd, which is what you usually find in places. You got to get the 832nd, which is a little harder to find. Maybe they should make the hole a little bit bigger. And uh, so they can use the more commonly uh, available screw. And let's see. So we know it's not lit up. So I'm going to see if we can do a quick operational test. It's set to um, go with the low water cutoff at uh, two um, minute delay. Uh, what we can do is set it to go with, and it, by usually taking the point of my knife there, I'm going to set it to a 30 second delay, which is not recommended. And we'll go to a one gallon feed or one minute holding open of the solenoid. And again, this is line voltage, so you want to be extra special careful. So we'll slip one end of this jumper wire underneath the hot, and we want to send the hot to the feed trigger. And what that'll do is that we'll send a trigger through the circuitry here, and we'll know that's the case when we see a period after the zero when we turn this thing on. Hmm. Oop, turn on the wrong switch. There we go. There we go. Good. Got it. So there's our period, meaning it's getting the signal. It's going to count down about 30 seconds. If you push this feed, it'll interrupt that, that time down. I don't know if it resets it or not. I haven't really determined that, but we'll find out pretty soon in a few minutes. Um, so basically, we have, okay, yeah, there's the date code there, May 27th, 2020. Uh, so this is just uh, prior to their changeover with the reversible um, uh, solenoid uh, valve, uh, the flow. Oh, there we go. You hear the hum. Remember, there's, it's not hooked up to water, it's just a timer, so if there's no water pressure on there, there will be no flow into the boiler. Um, it will run for approximately one minute, and then turn off. We can break the feed. We'll wait till it kicks over to uh, three, and then we'll stop the process. If it goes a feed, and then a delay, and then another feed, and there's still a call. There's still a call from the low water cutoff, uh, which is what's causing that uh, period, or what should cause that uh, period to show up. It will then go into lockout, um, as discussed in the instructions in its further videos. Again, this video is starting to run a little bit too long, and uh, I don't want to bore you to death. Oh, we just kicked over to three, and it should stop. And Okay, it's still getting a call for heat, obviously, by this jumper. So we're going to take this out. And 
as you go through and you do your yearly maintenance um, on this, um, you record the number and log it into that little tag that I showed you earlier. And then sometimes you can do a, uh, a reset. So we're down to two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this again off camera, bring it up to two. I will then record um, the date of my test and uh, seal this unit back up. It's ready to go out into the field and uh, start uh, serving uh, customers and uh, helping them to maintain their steam boilers. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, remember to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.